Uh, we are going to the official Big Hooney July 4th party. I've heard stories, and I think it's gonna be legendary. Let's do it. This might be the only party of the year. Everything else is just more of a shindig. This is the party. Katie said I can only talk to girls ug uglier than Katie, and I said then I could talk to all of them. So you oh, fucked up, bitch. Oh, he's back! <laughs> Poker for me this summer has been not as good as last fall, but also I don't think bad. Ah, uh, let's not talk about my dumb SOP. <laughs> my summer was not that great until I finally, he's done it, 11 years it took, I cashed the main event. This is the only sporting main event that anybody can just go play, compete, and become a world champion. That's exciting. That, that has people losing sleep, has people dreaming about like what could be. I mean, first place is $10 million. Come on. I've bubbled it a few years, gotten piles of chips many times, but I finally cashed the main event. Half the battle, WSOP is always the mental game. Uh, I think we handle our emotions fairly well this summer with how bad we got our teeth kicked in. After last year's run in the main, my hopes were so high for this that when I busted out day one and literally had no momentum going, I was sad for four days. Three, four days, I think I was kind of like sad for. Somewhere looking back, like it almost feels like a blur. Uh, we didn't get anything going poker-wise. 95% of our caches were min caches, and the ones that weren't, it was 5% swaps for my girlfriend. <laughs> like literally, that was my second biggest cache of this series. If you're on Twitter during the main event, you'll see how many people are sad. Like everyone's tweeting about it, you just kind of, have to. I don't know. It's just like you just feel it, man. It's different. You know, even though we didn't get as deep as we wanted, we still cashed it. It's, you know, kind of a bucket list thing for me to do. And, you know, it was, it was the summer wasn't overall that bad. I can't wait to go to Vegas. You always come to Vegas so excited, but then after the first week, you're like, oh God, like I don't know how anyone does this. I'm gonna write down here because no one's ever gonna come down on the second row. Camille's got so many caches, they won't fit on the thing. <laughs> he said Camille has so many caches, it won't fit on the thing. <laughs> he extended the sheet off the... <laughs> you want that one? Hell yeah, I want this yeah. one. I'm eating the ebony diet. <laughs> okay, first, it's not the best steak ever. It is the best because it's grass-fed and there's no seasonings other than salt. Okay, I went to Gordon Ramsay's steak the other night. <laughs> it was better than this. I would imagine. I'm just gonna say that. Like, I thought this was gonna be good, and it's better now. It's probably better. <laughs> it's got more flavoring now. What are, what are you doing today? What, what, what is the ebony day two? Chris is like, what are you doing on your day off? It's between day one and day two of the main event, and I'm like, oh, like, I'm gonna go to the sauna, go to the float tank, I'm gonna get a workout in. You wanna work out with me? Oh my god, you should work out with me. Yes! Yes! <laughs> So I was like, yeah, come on, come come do you know what I do and I will go do what you do. And you do this on purpose. <laughs> yes. Alright, so that, that's your prep for day two. 
And he's like, my day two is way more fun. And I'm like, what are you gonna do? And he's gonna go gamble and sit at the sports book and like eat chicken wings or something. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. What a nightmare. That sounds like a complete nightmare. <laughs> you sit in a dark room and think about yourself and I go have fun. It's your version of fun, my version of fun. All right, everybody at home. If you had to pick Ebony's day or Chris's day, which would you do? We know the answer to this question. No I know I know what they would pick, but they're like, well, there's a version of me that would want to pick Ebony's day, but I'm not going to. There's no version of anybody that would pick Ebony's day. I was impressed with Chris almost immediately because when we were stretching, his mobility is extraordinary and I couldn't believe it. I was like, if you actually wanted to start working out, like, you're so ahead of the game. Dude, you are so flexible. What the fuck? Your mobility is great. <laughs> I can sit down. This is easy. I can sit down all day. Oh my God. Do you know how many people have a hard time with this? Yep. And do 12. Do I stand all the way up? Yep. Then go back down? Yep. Sucks. <laughs> you know what? That floating sounds pretty good right about now. <laughs> Medic. So we did the first round and he was like, I tell you what, I'll do three rounds if the second round we do what I want. And I was like, okay. Yeah, that was a mistake. First thing you gotta do, dumbbell. You gotta do five curls each side. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I don't even think I could do one. I win. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna do it, fuck it. He came up with this bullshit single arm curls with a 30 pound kettlebell, and I physically can't do it, and I was, I convinced him to let me do it oh, with fuck. both arms. <sighs> oh, fuck. Oh, I can do that. 10 of those. 20 of these. Fuck you, no, <laughs> No, it feels like 20. No. <laughs> this might be the end of our workout today. If she does this, my last set will <laughs> suck. Oh, fuck. Okay. Come on, you can rest in four, is that what you told me? <laughs> I really had to muster a lot of inner strength for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She choose wrong. Hey, bitch, I did it. Dude, go. All right, give it all the way over here. Come on. Oh my God. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Woo! Oh, oh. oh my God. This guy's a savage. Are you kidding me right now? These are quarter squats, but they're squats. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not light. What the fuck? What is that? Who would have known that like Moneymaker is just this like mobile fitness guru underneath all that love, you know? <sighs> no, I gotta do push-ups again. <laughs> Fuck Dan, okay. Let's go! <laughs> so and now we just got our last round and then we're done. You're the reason we're all here, Chris. Actually right now, you're the reason I'm here. <laughs> The 2003 main event champ with the 2022 main event champ. Here we are. Let's go! <laughs> Wake me up for day two. So from the moment I put out this basketball challenge that I was gonna be doing, a lot of people were commenting on how I should try to accomplish making 100 free throws in a row. Drew had originally brought up this basketball challenge and I said, let's do it. And he's like, well, I'm thinking about it. I said, no, let's do it. And I started mapping out how we're gonna do it. The camera angles, the setup, the tech, the whole live stream. And man, we put on a hell of a show. In 24 hours, he has to make a hundred free throws in a row. If I didn't know Drew and I was just somebody random on Twitter, I would bet against him. A lot of this was mental strategy, okay? because the biggest hurdle in this challenge is getting distracted and unfocused. He wants to stay on the court, he wants to sleep on the court, he wants to be immersed in the basketball. He's streaming it live on Twitch. It's gonna be a spectacle, and Drew performs under the lights. I decided I cannot count, and I do not want to count, I'm done with it. It's messing with my head too much, so I just completely left the counting to train, and I just focused on set, shoot. 
Everybody in the chat was sweating as Drew went on his big run. His previous best was 48 when he attempted this. As he proceeds to beat this, everyone in the chat can't breathe. We're all like heartbeat pulsing right out of our neck, intense. So I'm on a heater. I know at this point that I've made a lot of shots in a row. I'm trying to not think about it. I get up to the line, I shoot. Oh. And then immediately, I need to know, because I know it was like a six streak. I'm like, what was that one? 63. 63? I wouldn't be doing this challenge if I didn't already believe. But at this point, I'm like, I believe, believe. <laughs> I have a nice streak going. I can feel it. But with that said, I'm also starting to get a little bit tired. And I know that I could just sit on this lead. It's a gamble. So Drew basically shoots bucket after bucket, doesn't know where he's at. He just knows that he's drained a lot in a row. And then suddenly he says, you know what? I think I'm gonna call it for the day. And we're gonna go get some crab. What? I was starting to get in my head and I was starting to think, oh wow, I know I'm high up there. I don't want to miss. And I was starting to think it too much. I don't know where I'm at right now. I don't care to know where I'm at right now. I just know I need to just decompress and like not shoot for a little bit. It just felt like the right moment. Imagine what it would be like starting up tomorrow with a huge lead into this. After I got to 51 and decided to stop for the day, I made the most logical decision I think anyone else in my situation could have made. And we went to Boiling Crab to eat a massive pile of crab legs. I have no idea what mystical free throw seafood voodoo he's working with, but it's true. And I'm not gonna question it, I'm in. So we went and got some crab. Yeah, so now we step into Chris's fun day two prep. And that means we go to the sports book at Bellagio and bet on some games. Shut up, man. You can do splits? He can do I feel like you can do splits. Really can. Let me see. No, we're close. Do it. Show them. Let me see. No lie, man. Man servant The this man servant says it must be true. There you go. He can go that far down. No, shut up. Oh. Okay, you're doing No, no I'm not doing up. that. Oh. If I pay you 500, can I not do it? Yeah. Show him the limbo. No, keep going. Keep going. Yes, you can. If I go any farther, there, there's no. I got no, you. no. <laughs> it actually was pretty relaxing. Don't tell him that. Let's go bet everything on the Yankees. We just like hung out, watched the games, and kind of decide what we were going to bet on. And then they ten thousand dollars on some baseball game, sure, no problem. Just... Go for it. Oh my God, <laughs> that's a bad sign. That's a bad sign. <laughs> that's just like throwing money on the casino floor. No big deal. Chris, when are, when is ACR gonna sign Camille? <laughs> We've talked about how Camille is actually such a good player and Party's not <laughs> that literally we should just cut Party and sign Camille. No, we can't cut no. Party. Party can go find something else to do. He, he was like on a TV show or something, right? Like Survivor or... It is a lot more relaxing than I thought it would be. I was like, I was jumping to conclusions. I was jumping to conclusions too about yours and I was right. <laughs> so I think I now have a new like day two, day off WSOP main event tradition. Moneymaker stuck with me. I don't know what a float tank is either, but I'm, I'm, go <laughs> I'm going to it. A flow tank is just a sensory deprivation tank, which is just a body of water filled with like a thousand pounds of salt, and you just completely float in pitch black, and there's no sound, and you do that for an hour, and you're just alone with your thoughts, but you float. <laughs> Are you ready to float? I think I'm gonna sink, personally. You've got an hour, okay? An hour, these lights will come on that you don't see, and that should wake you. If you don't wake, it's cool. If you fell asleep, you let go. That's the whole point. Jets could turn on. Those are gonna push you into the wall. Don't wake up from that, I'm tapping on the tank. Don't wake up from that, she coming in. Don't wake up from that, I'm coming in, and we getting real comfortable, all right? Awesome, sounds awesome. All right, sounds good. 
Um, so I think initially when he saw the room, he was panicking a little bit, uh, but then once Moss walked him through everything, I think he took it on the chin. All right, you guys gotta go. That's the scariest thing I've ever done in my life. Was there was a monster in there. Thanks, man. It was really cool. I, I really I enjoyed it. This was much better than what we did before. Much better. <laughs> Good to go. Yeah. I'm gonna win the main event. No, you're gonna get third. I'm getting first, Camille's getting second, and you're gonna get third. <laughs> Yeah, I absolutely think he enjoyed his day. Regardless of what he tells you, he loved it. He absolutely loved it. And he'll do it again. Yeah. 10% uh, of everything. He owes me 10% of everything. We've already established that. So going into the next day, I was feeling great. I'm walking into 51 already made. I, I know I'm making my first one. And then we just go from there. I can only imagine how scared a bunch of you in the chat would be taking this first shot. Jeez. So he basically started again on day two. He proceeded to get his flow without the ball. Then he starts shooting. He makes one, he makes two, he makes three. I missed. I maybe got to like 54, 55. So now we're back to zero with like four hours left. The pressure's on. Oh no, he should have kept shooting yesterday. He missed a shot. Please. We just got word with two hours left in this challenge that if I can hit this 100 in a row, we're gonna give away a Venom ticket to the chat. So straight up, just for watching, being here, hanging out. Uh, pretty sick sweat, so <sighs> no pressure, right? Jeez. As I'm seeing the clock count down from about two hours, I'm having to take some deep breaths because right now at this point, I'm fighting the negative thoughts in my head that are like, you can't do this. So little known fact, our boy Bet on Drew, under slight intoxicated purposes, decided to do this back on the island just for fun, no sort of regulation line, but ended up draining, I think, 80 or 90 in a row. So we thought, let's invite our friend, Mr. Alcohol, down to the court. I was ready to throw a Hail Mary, and I was like, boys, get me a drink. I'm gonna relax a little bit here and just enjoy shooting, okay? This, this is our last line of defense in order to win this. I felt the alcohol take over me a little bit in a sense, and I felt really relaxed. I was just unconscious. It felt really good. I was just like, bang, 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 bang. We have one person rebounding, and they're instantly getting the ball back to Drew, and he's shooting him quick. I mean, the pace is really, really, really fast, to the point where we can have chances at 100 every 10 minutes or so. Like, I missed one out of like 98 or 99 or 100, one out of it. I was like right there at the 100 mark with only missing one in between those two streaks. The entire mood of the room got elevated all over again, and we thought there's a chance this guy can get this at the buzzer. You guys want one official final run with 11 minutes left? Huh? One more run. When I, when I start missing two in a row, I know what that means. I, I hit my, you know what I mean? There's a point where at the end of the basketball game, there's 30 seconds to a minute left, and everyone's going out, they're shaking hands. The third and fourth team are coming out. You kind of just know. It was at that point where I was like, okay, it's time to go shake hands. We did our best, it was a sick sweat, but I'm not gonna get there this time. I'm always trying to think of the positive twist in those moments where you, on the surface, have failed, right? But I have put myself in a position to fail and to grow. Don't be an ass. Hit that subscribe and like button. And don't forget to comment. <laughs>